our own image. It means we are just like him. He is the main person. So for you to understand why you are in this world, who you are, you need to go back to him and ask him and say, Lord, who am I? Why am I here? Why is my life like this? If maybe things are not going well and God will say, this is who you are. This is the purpose that you need to fulfill as long as you are in this world. So all the answers, we can go everywhere and ask people and do everything. But the main thing is going back to the source. So, so people were actually asking, how, how do I go back to the source? How, how do, do I go with God? It's allowing your spirit to rest. I only say that to people. Go into prayer, not having a bucket list because most of the time we go into prayer with our whole list and say, okay, I'm going to greet God because maybe we need to go, one day go back to the basics. How should we pray? as people, because you find that the basics of prayer are not even there, you know? It's like us having a conversation right now. You are asking questions and I'm giving answers. With God, it's the same thing. We go to him like our father. He is like any other uh, person in the world. It's just that you know, he's the creator of the universe. But yeah. sometimes we go to prayer and we want to speak all the time. And we don't allow him to respond back. Yeah. And most of the time when we do that, then we are not going to get the answers that we want. Yeah. Ask him the question. He says uh, in Malaka Tasni, ask him, I would like to challenge everybody today. Go to God and ask just one question and see if he's not going to respond. Okay. All right. Perfect. So, and then the other um, uh, um, uh, question that people uh, touched on was around the names to say, um, okay, well, I know this is my name, but what if I cannot figure out what is the significance of the name that I have been given by my parents? I think you made an, um, an example about your name, <laughs> Lucretia. <laughs> yeah. Maybe you just want to touch on that because I think what happens most of the time is that like, for instance, my other name is Patience. But I mean, obviously growing up, I was like, no, I don't want to be called Patience, but most of the purpose that I am destined for is centered around that name, Patience. Yeah. And it's the names that we don't like usually <laughs> that you find your, your purpose. But yes. oh, Lucretia, I needed to go for three days, I did say, because yes. my mother gave me a different um, um, uh, explanation of why she decided to give me that name. Yeah. Because she's the one who gave me that name. But you yeah. know, one day I was praying and God said, come to me. I'm the one who directed your mother to, to give you that name. So I went on a fast for three days. I was, I was sitting, concentrating myself, uh, just be in the presence of God. I was not moving. I was, not, I was just reading the word and asking God all these questions. And he told me on the, towards the end of the second day. And he said, your name means success. And you're going to be successful in everything that you do, as long as it's things that are aligned for you. The things that I have not aligned for you, you'll never see success in those. So, and then he took me to four uh, brilliant women that were given the same name. The other one was married to a king of, Israel, of England. The other one was, was um, a marshal in a, in a, in a war. And, the, and the, the other two were just women that did phenomenal work in, in their community. I read about those women and the one that was married to a, a, a king of England lived in the 15th century. And she did a lot of wonderful work. And the king was successful because of her. So I read about those women and I, and God was saying, this is what you are going to do. This is what you're going to do. This is what you're going to do. As, as I was reading about these four women. So for me, staying for three days, because on the third day, it's, we was just stealing everything. For me, staying for three days, just to discover what my, man, my name meant. And God, we agreed with God that every time I go into prayer, I'm going to use that name. 
All right. All right. Very interesting. So you're also touching on two other things that I've picked up. Um, you say he, he said that you will be successful only on the things that he has aligned for you. Because for yes. me, then the question is, how do I know that this is aligned for me and this is not aligned for me? And then the second thing that you're mentioning, three days. So it's not a quick fix kind of thing when you are dealing with God. He doesn't deal with, uh, he doesn't like us because see now these days we are two minutes noodles Christians. And God sometimes is working on us and working on our patience. Hey, lucky Luke, your name is patient. <laughs> Some of us, we have, been <laughs> we have been rushing things and God is saying, I'm not good because you have a lifetime. You have so much time that I've given you to leave and find answers. So let's have these conversations. Give me time, then I'll unveil a lot of, of my secrets about you and where I'm sending you. So we need to make time for God. I'm going to challenge everybody. The one that is praying one minute, make it two. You, if you are praying five, make it 10. If you are praying 15 minutes, make it 30. If you are praying an hour, make it two. You know, last week God um, said to me, if you're serious about me, Bongi, and you are thinking this is three hours that you're spending with me a day is too much, you need to think again. So I'm spending more time now with him because I'm seeing the more I sit with him, the more I do stuff, um, I mean, sit and, and read the word and ask for uh, explanation and ask for new revelations of the word, the more I understand what God wants me to do. Your second question is about alignment. The more you sit with God, is the more you get his secrets and what you're supposed to do on a daily basis, not for a certain season only. But God will take you by the hand and say, do this today, do that tomorrow, do that, you know? And every day you sit with him, you will be getting answers of things that he wants you to do. Because we have been going here wire and everywhere and doing all sorts of things. And you find those things that are not what God has aligned for your life. It's for somebody else, but it's not for you. Wow, that's very interesting. But I think what is becoming more clearer is that the more time you spend with God, then you will be in a better position to understand all these things that you are referring to. Okay, coming back to today's question, <laughs> spiritual circumcision. I know that, um, I mean, I obviously would have listened to that sermon that you offered and the whole gist is found in Joshua chapter five. So maybe just um, briefly tell us, the whole issue here is that uh, Joshua was given this responsibility and essentially he didn't think or feel that he has what it takes to take care of the uh, Israelites at that time. And I think most of us are usually um, caught up in that kind of situation where we're not sure that we are the ones that are meant to be doing certain things. Yeah. I think the main thing about Uchoshua was, which most of us uh, go through. Uh, I remember when I shared um, in the ministry about uh, spiritual circumcision, which is very deep in my heart because it's something that I've gone through <laughs> and I've experienced it personally and my life has changed. And I think with the word of God, God does not allow you to, 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 to share something that you don't have experience on because you need to speak about your own experiences so that it's believable. Oh, yeah. Joshua, like all of us, when God says, boom, this is what you need to do. And it's huge. Just imagine you are given a company to run a multinational company. Mm -hmm. 5,000 people that are employed in that company. And here you are, you're saying, I was junior, I got promoted. I don't even understand the people that are senior to me in the company. And uh, there's so many people that are going to challenge me because they know maybe they think they know better than me. They've been with the company for a long time. That is what was happening with Joshua. The same thing with ministry. You are, you are asked to, to step up in a ministry and maybe be a senior pastor. And there's been maybe um, a pastor that has been there for 30, 40 years who was doing his own uh, stuff and doing well. And here you are, you are supposed to be taking over that. It's the same thing that Joshua was going through here. 
Joshua was saying, oh Moses, Lord, saw you, saw your back. You had conversations with Moses. You, you, you are called um, a Moses' friend and all these things. Uh, but who am I as Joshua? Who am I as this small uh, guy that has been working with Moses, that has been following Moses, but I find myself uh, having to fit in these shoes and I don't think I'm worthy. And most of us, we go through that. We feel we are not worthy. But with the test that Joshua had gone through, God was saying, I'm with you. I am with you, uh, Joshua. I am with you because this assignment, you have been given by me as God. So I'm going yeah. to equip you. I'm going to empower you. I'm going to make sure that I lift you up and you're going to be ready and even do even better maybe than Moses. But I always say, um, the most important thing with a spiritual circumcision, you go through it because God has seen that you love him. God has seen your heart. Mm. And I, I say to people, it means concentration from your side. You are saying, Mina, I'm removing myself from everybody. I'm going to live for God. I'm going to make sure that I, as Ubongi, I'm going to live a life that God wants me to live. And, and it's for people that say, deep down in my heart, I know there's a lot that I'm supposed to be offering, but I want God to assess me in taking this journey. I don't want to go through this journey alone, but I'm allowing God to take me through the journey. Okay, right. yeah. so maybe, let me just um, uh, come in there. I want to read, you know, um, the, the extra scripture, which is um, Joshua 5. Five. So I'll read chapter 2, yes. where it says, At that time, the Lord told Joshua, make flint knives and circumcise this second generation of Israel. So Joshua made flint knives and circumcised the entire male population of Israel at Gibeah Harlot. I think what you mentioned in your um, offering there is that the, the knife was meant for Joshua first. Okay. Yes, I love it in your King James because it puts it nicely. Yeah. The yeah. New King James says, make flint knives for yourself. Yeah. And then circumcise the Israelites. Right. So the new King James put it nicely that oh, Joshua needs to make the flint knife for him. So the knife needs to go to him first before the other people. Yeah. And I always say to people, the word of God needs to work on you. People need to see you changing. Need, people need, you, sh you should be a book that is readable. Yes. When you are yes. walking there, people should see and say, hey, that person. And then when they come closer to you and ask you questions, you start saying, no, I'm a child of God. But without you saying a word, people need to see that you are a child of God. So oh, Joshua, the circumcision needed to happen with him first before it went to the children of Israel. Yeah. So it's yeah. about you first. You can't, yeah. you know, we can't live this life um, uh, people saying, uh, do as I say, but don't do as I do. Uh -uh. Mm -hmm. So the flint knife needed to come to Joshua first before mm -hmm. it went to other people. Yeah. So you need to, I said to you, I've experienced a spiritual circumcision myself. So yeah. um, I think I have graduated in speaking about it. So yeah. you can't, as a person, speak about something that you have not gone through. Mm -hmm. God allows us to go through this so that we show the love of him. So that we speak about something and say, hey, I've gone through the spiritual circumcision and it's very helpful. And when we go back to the, the actual circumcision that we know that is, that is a physical, it's painful. Yeah. It's painful. People yeah. go through it because for health reasons, one. Some mm -hmm. people go through it because they, they, their beliefs say we should go through it. But the spiritual one is for everyone. All of us go through the spiritual circumcision. Maybe let me explain it. 
You choose yeah. Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior and say, Lord, I choose you. And there's excitement. Maybe you were invited in this ministry by your friend and you find yourself convicted and you end up choosing Jesus Christ as the Lord and Savior. And after that, you are told you have received the full package. One, your angels are going to be working for you because you can command them to do the stuff. You are going to, you are filled now with the Holy Spirit. You invite the Holy Spirit and you are filled with the Holy Spirit. And now you are reading the word and everything. You are excited because when a, a sinner has come back to God, there's so much excitement in heaven. There's jubilation. And, and then you have declared war. I always say that to people. You have declared war to the enemy and the attacks are going to start. So the, when the attack starts, you are just telling yourself, I violence the enemy and things are going to be um, okay. But the more you, you walk with God, the more attacks that you get. So, and you need to stand. That's where the circumcision comes in. Because you need to stand, not for yourself, but because you love God. Because you're saying, I want to live a life that God wants me to, irrespective of what you are going through. The spiritual circumcision comes because God expects you to spend more time with him, one. Two, God expects you to, you know, it happened with, I was reading before I read to Joshua, and when I was preparing last year, I was reading the story of Job. Uchop went through spiritual circumcision, but at the end, he got a double portion. So I want yeah. to say to people, even if you are, you are going through spiritual circumcision, whereby you lose stuff, because most of the time, when we're going through spiritual circumcision, we lose the material stuff. People start asking you questions and say, Aibo, what happened to you? The moment you started working with God, you are losing stuff, your cars get repossessed. Your house, the, the bank is calling you because you can't pay for your bond. There's so much that is happening. Even your friends, they leave because you are no more this um, well-to-do person. You are no more in the standards where you were. And most of the time you lose because God wants you to trust him with your own. Wow, 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 wow. That's a mouthful, you know. Um, but somebody out there might be asking the question, but God is, an, is a loving God, you know? Why do I have to go through all those inconveniences? Because I've said yes. And if I have said yes, I mean, I'm available for him to use me in any other way that he deems fit. So why do I have to go through all those inconveniences? Okay. The answer is, 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 is so easy. Yeah. For you to pass any grade, you need to write the exam. All right. Mostly, okay. Let's let's get into your year. Uh, there are normal tests that we go through, and uh, maybe weekly tests or monthly tests, but they are quarterly tests that we need to pass usually for for a, a report to be given at school. And yeah. then mid year we write a mid year test. Yeah. And then you see yourself if you're supposed to be improving this or you're not supposed to be improving in this or you're in the right line. At the end of the year, you write the main exam that is going to take you to the next grade. It's the same thing with your spiritual work. You need to pass exams for God to take you to the next grade and say, hi, my child, we have passed this one and there is a tick. And then you, know, you go to the next grade and then you pass. So life is about tests. It's about exams. And the more we walk with God, the more tests we'll get. Because you remember Ucho, when God said, when, when, because it was the enemy who went to God and say, ha, I've been walking with the world, Nina. These people, they just love me. And God said, have you seen my servant Job? So God allows this situation so that he can boast about us. So that he can showcase about us. So that he can show the enemy, what's your own, this one. I, uh, uh, this one, mean uh, the two of us are uh, in this thing together. And you can never interfere, even if you try and take everything away from this person. This person will still stand. Wow, wow, everything. But um, the person will still stand. There's another thing that you mentioned that 
uh, in the book or in the in the in the in the in the verses it says it was going to be happening for the second time and that there would have been a 40 years that would have lapsed without any circumcision do you want to say something about that as well okay let me let me go back you know yeah. with the jews um after eight days they give their children for dedication it's a naming ceremony it's a huge thing it's a big thing and yeah. they name the child and um and they dedicate the child to god back to god and with that they believe because they circumcise their children on the, if it's a male and if it's it's a girl both of them they are they are dedicated so that is regarded as a first circumcision and with us with the spiritual one when we choose jesus christ as our lord and savior and say that's our first circumcision because I'm saying, I'm separating myself, Lord. I'm choosing you. I'm going to live a good life. And my life is going to be great because I've reunited with you. Because you remember, sin separated us from God. So yeah. now God is saying, if you choose Jesus Christ as a Lord and Savior, you are getting your full package of what you lost because you were born of sin. So what happens with the second circumcision, when you're saying, I am now Lord, you know, with me, I always tell the story because it's good when you tell your own um, personal stories. I had been walking with God for a long time. I chose Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior 22 years ago. Yeah. And I walked, I walked, I walked. I was learning the basics. I was praying and doing all things. But one day I needed to say, Lord, I want to start a serious relationship with you where I yes. go to the next level. I want to commit myself to you. I want to, to experience the miracles, signs and wonders. I want to experience the higher spiritual things. And I said all these things. You know that day when I said it, I remember it was 2010. God said this is going to prayer. I found myself praying for four hours for the first time in my life. Right through, four hours. And the moment I woke up, four hours. And I started at quarter to 12. And the next time I saw the watch, it was quarter to four. And God said, we have started this war. And we are going to go through so many test wounds. And the tests that I've gone through since that time, I can write so many books. Because one, I've lost material things. Two, I've lost people in my life. Three, my relationships with other people didn't make sense because I decided to consecrate myself for God. Because I said, Lord, I love you enough, like Job did. And what kept me going through that time was reading the, 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 the book of Job. Because I kept on reminding myself that Job at the end, in Job 52, he got a double portion. And I'll yeah. read again, and I'll, I'll read the stories, and I'll see see the pain that he went through and it was the same pain that I was going through because people know you at by certain standards and you tend to walk this walk with God and so many things happen and some people make a joke out of you because you have lost stuff but God restores at the end because he's the one he's the giver he's the provider so whatever that you go through and um, that is a test they are just tests and you are going to pass them. Let's make sure that we pass these exams, we pass this test so that we get elevated. Because where I'm sit sit sitting now, I'm so peaceful, I'm so happy, I'm so joyful, and I'm walking with my God. And I, 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 I say, God is just a phone call away. I say, Lord, let's just sit here, let's have this discussion. And now I understand what Moses um, was having, that relationship with God. And it's the same relationship that we all, all of us are striving to get. So maybe you must actually just assist us here by, you know, sort of explaining it a little bit in detail, this whole thing about a commitment, the obedience, you know, because it would seem like those are the key things for you to be able to stay in his will is to be committed to the work and also to be obedient. I always say to people that I have a one on one with, what is the time that you have agreed with God to meet? Because you need to go into prayer. Some of us, God says, um, uh, we, you need to meet at nine. 
Some of us, God will say, early hours of the morning, I need to meet you at 2 a.m. Some people, God will say, I need to meet you at 3. Uh, some people, God will say, I need to meet you at 12 when the day starts at midnight. So make a commitment to those times. Agree with God. This is the time that you are meeting and keep to those times. The more you keep to the time, the better and a relationship you are. It's the same thing with, with, your, with, with your employer. You are asked to, to be there at eight and you are there at eight. But with God, we don't do that. God says we need to be with him at 2 a.m. We wake up, we're like, no, Lord, it's too early. I'm still drowsy, I'm tired. I was working throughout the day. But honor that time. Because if you're honorable from your side, with your covenant, because that's a covenant that you're forming with God. In saying, we're meeting Baba at one o'clock. We're meeting at two. If you honor that time, God is going to elevate you. And there's so much because he knows with one o'clock I'm meeting Ubongi and these are the things that we are going to discuss with Ubongi today. So as soon as you sit down and say, Lord, I'm here, then he starts downloading stuff to you. And if you miss the time, really, I only say to people, your angels are already waiting for you at 1 a.m. If God has said to you, I know there's somebody who's watching right now that God is speaking to because God has said to this person, 1 a.m. we're meeting, and this person has been deeply telling. I'm speaking to you right now. I'm saying, as you are watching today, too, be the person that, I mean, to honor the time that God has said to you, you should honor. Honor yes. it. Okay. 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 All right. So you talk also about being consecrated. Uh, because it, those are the things that it takes for you to be spiritually circumcised so that you are able to listen to God and do exactly what he wants you to do. Can you take us through that? Okay. Concentration, I only say to people, it's just a time that you decide on with God that I'm going to, like these days, we have a three-day fast at church. Yeah. Um, we are fasting for three days. And we have told ourselves, and we have given the theme this month that is going to be about the glory of God. It's got nothing to do with us. We're just praying for the glory of God. So um, even if it's one day a week, yeah. even if it's one day a month, even yeah. if it's one day in six months, but mm. have a day where you're just saying, I'm going to give this day to God. Not a Sunday, because everybody is saying Sunday because we go to church, blah, 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 and all these things. Just give yourself time. If you're saying it's three days, even if you go with other people, because I, I always say maybe for the first one, you can't be all by yourself because you need somebody maybe to assist you with what you need to do in seeking God. Just sit. Take your Bible, take your notebook, and sit, read the word, and, and whatever that is deposited in your spirit, write it down. And you find the conversation with God is going to run so smoothly. Every time I get asked, how do I hear God? I'll say to people, just sit and listen, and God is going to respond. Uh, somebody <laughs> How do I know that's him? That's God that's responding. It's not just me thinking about whatever, because obviously we want to think about the positive things and what we would like to manifest in our lives. And um, though, so how do you know that this is just not my thoughts? This is now God speaking to me. The voice, you know, you know, I always say to people, we are spirits and God is a spirit. Yeah. And, and he's our father. If I, I ask you now and say, don't you know the voice of your father? Of so course I do. Like <laughs> sorry, sorry. No, I'm saying, you know, the voice of my dad, of course I do, but he's yes. late. <laughs> yes, it's the same thing. All right. When, when, when you go to God, you read the word. I always say to people, start with a prayer, read the word. And just say, Lord, I'm waiting on you and nobody else. Speak to me. And he's going to speak. And the more you get, it's, it, you know, prayer, I always
only say spending time with God and prayer is like any other skill. The more you spend time with him, the better knowledge of the voice you, you, you will get. And you understand that um, this is God speaking. This is the enemy speaking. Uh -uh. My God, my, my, my father does not speak like this. Mm. And there will be a difference in the voices. You always get the difference. You can't mm. explain it to the next person who has not experienced it because everybody, you need to experience it for yourself to yeah. understand that this is the voice of God. We're doing the exercise here at home because of the lockdown. I kept on saying, go back, listen and hear the Holy Spirit. And everybody, as I said that, they were coming back with a lot of messages from God. Yes, amazing. So maybe just let me go to, to a question here on our Facebook Live is a question asked by Nozi Postokela Mkize. What is the practical way of trying to stand when challenges come left, right, and center? You know you love God, but standing seems impossible. Yeah, we always get that. I always say it's about the company you keep. Surround yourself with people who are prayerful. Surround yourself with people that are going to speak positive things. Surround yourself with people that are going to um, uh, assist you with your journey. Get even one or two or three people that are going to be there for you, who are there, who are just there. And don't go for yourself and say, I'm going to fight. Uh -uh. Allow God to lead you to those people. I always get a request from people and uh, somebody will say, Mfundisi, can you mentor me? Before, if God has not spoken to me prior to that person coming to me and asking me to mentor them, I say to that person, please wait for me. Let me go into prayer. Maybe I'm not the one. Maybe I'm the one who's going to direct you to that person. Yes, it's very yes. important for you to surround yourself with people that God has appointed for your journey. Not because you have decided or you see uh, pastor so-and-so or sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so and you yeah. don't ask God that as I start this serious journey with you, Lord, who are these people that are supposed to be around me? And maybe the people will come on their own or maybe God will, will say, okay, go to so-and-so. And maybe when you go to that person, a person will say, I've been waiting for that, your call. Wow, amazing. I just want to go briefly to uh, some comments here on our Facebook Live page. Uh, Sis Lusanda, such a powerful conversation, ladies. It's interesting that you were just talking about the people that should be around you. Sis Lusanda, um, we are in uh, one of the groups with uh, her where we read the Bible every day. It's called Seek Fest. And um, I mean, like we're all going through stuff at the moment. So Sis Lusanda picked this up and he said, no, we are praying. And so we had this long prayer with her last night. Um, so I just, uh, it's important that I mention this particular point as you're talking about who is surrounding you. You know, it's very important. Sometimes we actually think that it should be our friends, friends, you know, the people that have been friends with us for the longest time. Sis Lusanda is much younger than me, much younger than me, which just... <laughs> But the, um, the, 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 the knowledge and um, the experience and um, the anointing on, on her is amazing. So because she chose to stand with me last night, I'm able to stand this morning and Amen. for the rest of the to be able to do this um, uh, uh, Facebook Live. I thought I should actually just mention that we have also a, a comment uh, there by a good friend of mine, Uzama. I actually call her Blossom. I'm glad, Zama, that you are saying that you've had such a revelation on your name this year. Now you understand why I call you Blossom. Mm -hmm. I just didn't want to be the one that says much about that uh, because I probably would have known at some point that will be revealed to you. Um, and then Usisis Tutugile Mkwanazi, Shamase. <laughs> say must love God for circumcision to take place uh, you know clearly there's no other way you know we've been uh, uh, edified 
today, Sister Zimteto says, God is at work. Amen. Indeed, he is at work in our lives. Uh, there's no question about that. Um, and then, obviously, Unozipo again. Now, I think it's improving as uh, she is uh, continuing watching us. Uh, light bulb moment. Honor the appointment with God, especially with winter season on our doorstep. You always yes. talk about this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we, always be on our, uh, we, we I usually have these conversations with you. Uh, and I'm, I'm really, I'm so blessed that um, you are one of the people that have, we, we are friends, we are business partners. So we've come a long way and here we are today. It's, it's such a blessing and an honor. And uh, I can not thank God enough for this relationship that we have and which is why we're able to have this conversation like this um today so honoring the appointment with god is key uno zipo is just can uh, i just add i just add that because yeah you know a, a lot of people ask uh, um ask that question you see um winter is the worst time i want to say the enemy knows that we are lazy in winter. yeah so, yeah. so the, the, the attacks are going to be too much for us, usually, because we sleep, we are sluggy. There's, you know, I always challenge people. I said this period when winter is starting, in fact, because it's starting um, mid-May, when it starts, pray even more, fight even more, and, and declare even more. Uh, you know, when I was still starting my, my serious work with God, I have this uh, man of God who said, you know, for you, especially in winter, get out of bed when you're praying. Yeah. Get out of bed, take your small blanket and kneel wherever. If you have a prayer room, go to that prayer room and just kneel and say, I'm entering. And other people that even ask to bath before, even if... God is saying to you, let's meet at 2 a.m. You need to go to the bath at half at one or half past one so that you are ready for 2 a.m. Yes. So I'm, I'm, I'm challenging everybody. Let's do things differently. This is a different year. God is blessing us even more. God is going to elevate us even more. And you'll find that the spiritual circumcision phase has passed for you. And God is about to bless you. But if you are not honoring the small things, and the appointment that you have with him, some things are going to pass you by. And it's the time also for us to retrieve our blessing. The time where you are meeting with God is the time where you're supposed to be downloading your blessing. So if you have not for that day, some of us who claim even more, God will say, like you remember, <laughs> the guy that was giving 10 talents, God, I mean, five talents, God gave him ten, um, double. Yeah. So for some of us who are honoring our appointment, God will double our blessing. Wow, wow. Uh, this is critical. Yeah, no, this is critical to honor our appointment. So, you know, as uh, you are explaining, Pastor Bongi, I'm thinking, you know, currently as we are locked down at home and uh, we're going through all sorts of emotions, the tests and challenges, I'm going through tests and challenges because obviously um, I'm, in the, I'm operating the sector that has been affected and it's going to be affected for the, for the longest time. Uh, but thank God I'm in a space whereby even though I'm going through that, but I am better now that I do know the things that we're talking about. Somebody uh, uh, watching us now would be saying like, but I cannot even because, you know, really I'm thinking about my business that is going down. I'm not going to have income. So is Yabona njo umjanja woktandaza gizo tola ganja ding lambi. Yes, I do understand. Yeah. Um, there was a time with the spiritual uh, circumcision that most of us we could not even pray. But you know, as I said, I needed, you know, there was a, a three days that I read Uchop, the whole book. Yeah. From chapter one to chapter 42. Yes. From chapter, for three, three days, from chapter one to chapter 42. From chapter one to, and it was a reminder to me of things that happened with Job and the promises that God made 
over my life. Because if you remember that, that when you came to this world, God said one, two, three, four, five, you will know that this phase will pass. I've gone through that. I can, I can testify so much. I've gone through a lot when I was told at the beginning of the year that I was going to lose everything. And I lost everything. I was told I was going to lose most of the people around me that I trusted. And by the end of that year, I had lost, I mean, most of the people left my life. But here am I standing today because God wanted to remove everyone around me so that it's just me and him and nobody else. I don't trust anybody else except him. I don't trust any human being except him. I don't trust my business more than him. I don't trust the relationships that I have with other people more than I trust him. I don't trust even the relationship that I have with Umfundi Siwami more than I trust him. Because all these people, God can allow them to just be removed from your life and you are left just with him. I was telling somebody yesterday, I said the task that we go through is to, it's, it's just to purify us. It's just to give us even more fuel to say, I'm willing to fight even more. And the good thing about it is as you're going through that, God will show you some light bulbs and say, I'm still here. You know, some young man said to us, the verse that says, I am the lamp of your feet. He is a lamp. So he will show you here, not there. Yeah. He will show you at the place where you are. And yeah. he'll, he's saying he's the light where you are. And take the days as you go, one step at a time, one step at a time. If you don't feel like praying, just worship. If you don't feel like I want, just get just one verse and leave with that verse for a day and your life is going to be different. I did that and my life, I don't want to lie. This season when everybody is saying things are not going well, Mina, I'm blessed. Yeah, because my That's business has just boomed. <laughs> this is the most hectic time for me because yeah. I said, Lord, in this time, Mina, this is what you said I should do. And I'm going to, I'm pursuing what you said I should do. Raise me at this time. And everybody's crying. Let it be the time when you raise me. And that's what I don't want to lie. That's what I'm experiencing. One, with my spiritual work. Two, with my business and everything else. And I'm seeing my household as well because we have been sitting and sharing the word. I'm seeing a spiritual growth in them. And I've been telling them that there will be tasks that they need to go through and, and spiritual circumcision will happen in their lives. Because for us to go to the next level, we need it. For a young boy to become a man, he needs mm -hmm. to go through circumcision. For us yeah. to move from being baby Christians to be matured Christians, we need to go through spiritual circumcision. Yeah, all right. Wonderful. I mean, I'm, I'm happy um, that we've covered this one because I think now the time that we're going through now is actually quite difficult for most people. And um, like, let me make an example. I'm, I like worshiping, you know, so most of the times probably I won't be feeling like actually praying, praying or reading the word, but I worship, I can worship, you know, one hour to two hours. I can do that. So perhaps it's also important for people to, to know themselves, know what is it that works better with them so that it's easier to flow and you, you're not fi finding yourself like you're pushing too hard. Um, you know, you like reading, so flow with reading the Bible. You know, um, you know that in fact praying because you like talking like you, so it's easier for you to... <laughs> <laughs> to pray yeah wow <laughs> you know when you were telling me that sometimes you pray for the whole day and it's like the whole day i'm not there yet but it, we're are all working yeah. progress but Let me go there, to... there are other two people that i would like to highlight yes there are other two people i want to speak about naomi as well that okay. she went through her own spiritual a circumcision when she lost her husband she lost her children and she thought her life was not making sense and but god said to her move mm -hmm. with the moving of going back home she got her breakthrough sometimes yeah. for us 
where we are, we're experiencing spiritual circumcision and God is saying, move where you are so that your life will start making sense. And the good thing about Naomi, when she went back home and going with, back with Ruth, with Ruth, she just told herself, because God unveiled to her the secrets and said, this one is going to lead you to better a, a better life because this one will be in the lineage of Jesus Christ. So sometimes we need to move. Don't stay in one place when God is saying move because you have also gone through the spiritual circumcision in that place. And God will say, I'm not saying run, I'm yeah. saying move yeah. because there's a difference between moving and running because some people, when they go through challenges, they start running. But when God says move and go back to where I placed you, then I will uplift you after that. So allow God to move you when it's time. But another person who went through a spiritual circumcision is Jesus Christ himself, our Lord and Savior. Yes. And the, 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 uh, the enemy tried to tempt him. He went through a fast for 40 days before he started his ministry. And the enemy attacked him and said, I can give you all this if you just bow down to me. That was part of the test. And he did anyone, he was hungry. Two, you know, after a 40 day fast, you are not the same and you are tired. You are this, you are that. And, and there's this thing that is being a, a carrot that is being dazzled to you to say, oh, if you do this, you are going to get that. And Jesus Christ said, no. So in, during spiritual circumcision, there will be so many temptations, but you need to stand and say, this does not sound like God. This is not it. Even if it looks like it, but it's not it. And you, you walk away. Mm -hmm. I just wanna thank you. Thank you so much for, for, for those two examples. In fact, I see here Mabui uh, says, I can relate to Naomi's story. Ogwangembele, uh, fortunately, is somebody that I know very well. And uh, I know exactly what uh, she's referring to here. And this is Sharon Dube is thanking Pumzile for inviting uh, my good brother, Paul Nzimande. He says, we must honor the appointment with God. <laughs> Thanks for this clarity. But why do the times have to be so inconvenient and out of the comfort zone? <laughs> why does it have to be one o'clock in the morning? You know? <laughs> Spiritual. And, and okay, let me, let me make it simple to you. Yeah. You are in a love relationship, intimate relationship, yes. and this yes. you end up speaking until 2 a.m. on the phone, 980. With yes. this person, you don't think the same thing with God. If you want an intimate relationship with Him, you need to be willing to go an extra mile. And that extra mile is um, uh, having those conversations in people, what they call ungodly hours. But God is just testing you. Can you ask? Because, you know, I always say to people, because people say 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, uh, 6 o'clock, because of the spiritual clocks. But I always say to people, my relationship with God on the 30th of April might not be the same on the 1st of May. Because God might say, Bongi, I no more want you to have a meeting with you at, um, at, at 2 a.m. I want us now to meet at 12 midnight. I no more want you us to meet at 12 midnight. But now I want us to meet at 5 a.m. So allow yourself to be moved as he moves you because he wants to see if you are willing to bend with him all the time. So as he moves you, I don't know how many times I've changed it, my prayer times with God. At one stage, it was 12 midnight. At one stage, it was 2 a.m. At one stage, it was 3 a.m. At one stage, it was 5 a.m. But as I'm growing with him, I'm allowing him to move and say, uh, uh, let's meet at 9 p.m. now, not at 12 p.m midnight let's meet at 3 a.m now and not at 10 p.m so let's allow those things to happen because even with our relationship worldly relationship we are able to juggle things around to meet the people that we love 
Yeah, yeah. Okay, there's another point uh, quickly before we close that you mentioned about Gilgal, about the, the stones um, that were there and, and them and the fact that um, it had something to do with the coming of Christ, you know, eventually, you know, do you want to touch that on, on that a little bit? Okay. Ikilkal is a, is a, okay. Um, Ikilkal is a place where um, there are seven uh, stones around Ikilkal. But the main thing, you are referring to another, another, another <laughs> Ikilkal. All right, let me explain it. I don't know if it's going to confuse people though. Okay. Or should we leave it for next time? Because it's a, it's a, it's a discussion on its own. Because it gives, okay. yes, and right. I would like us to keep it. I'm, 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 I'm because with the Gilda, God has, has deposited so much in my spirit okay. yeah. these days okay. as I'm sitting okay. and seeking okay. Him. And right. I will hate that we start the conversation and we, we end it uh, before. Okay. Um, and I mean, because we are left with about five minutes. And maybe when you invite me the next time, we'll have a discussion about Igilgal and the coming of Christ. Yes, okay, all right. I think that's, that's basically what um, I had in mind. Shengi uh, Wemafu is saying- Can I, can I? Hmm? No, I was just can reading I a comment add? here from Shengi. Uh, we saying, wow, Pastor, thank you for the light. Commitment is key, yes. Can, maybe I should allow you, uh, Pastor, to probably just do some like uh, closing remarks because we've been on for okay. an hour. Another thing that, summary. Okay, but what I wanted to highlight as well, for you to go through spiritual, we need to live a holy life. Holiness is key to God. As I said, those who go through spiritual um, uh, circumcision are those that are saying, I'm, I'm reserving myself for God. We can't live a reckless life. We can't live a sinful life. We strive to be righteous all the days of our lives. So for you to be able to go through the spiritual circumcision and pass it, you need to live a holy life. I will stress this. I will stress it tomorrow. I'll say, because God cannot move in your life when you are not living a holy life. I know the world is speaking something else, but this is what God expects us to do. We can't be living like any other person when you are say, saying to God, I am reserving myself for you. I want to live the life that you want me to live. Certain things are not going to uh, happen in our lives if we don't live a holy life. Certain blessings are not going to sit on us when we are not living a holy life. So spiritual circumcision will happen to us when we are living a holy life. And the period sometimes is going to be shortened when we are living a holy life. I just want to stress that holiness is key to God. And um, it's like cleanliness. Holiness is key to God. When we live a holy life, God will uplift us to higher levels. Wow, wow, that's amazing. So maybe before I close, I just want to read the last comment from uh, our daughter, Unofundo Ndlanya. Thank you so much for this session and motivating us to keep praying even in the winter. Yeah, it's very key for us to keep praying even in winter. Uh, Pastor, thank you so much for, for joining us once more for our um, Econo Thrive Global Conversations. It's the second offering, and um, I can promise our viewers at home that we will uh, be doing another session uh, next week. Uh, just, uh, uh, you know, keep looking on our Facebook page and our Instagram pages. Um, we intend to have this kind of sessions on a on a weekly basis. Let's keep going. Uh, it's key. Let's 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 pray, guys. There's no other way. It's it, all these things are available only if you spend time with God. Because if you spend time with God, you are able to hear Him clearly and take direction from him, and then your life will never be the same because you will be going through a circumcision. Amen. Amen. Can I just give them, uh, because 
I'm, I'm thinking some people are saying, how do I pray for four hours? How do okay. I uh, sustain myself for uh, when I've been praying for a minute to two? The main thing as you start your prayer um, uh, is just to open your heart and say, Lord, I'm here. And, and God is a good God because when you say, I'm here, I'm, I'm committed to hearing you. I'm committed in having this conversation with you. He is going to download a lot of things. But the main thing is to, when you start the prayer, Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, no matter how you put it, but call on him and call Jesus because he's the way to our Father too. Uh, I always say, call yes. him by his names. You know, all of us, when somebody says, I become excited. It's the same thing with God. Call him Yahweh, call him whatever that comes, whatever name that comes at that particular time. And you will see that you're, 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 you're even him, the way he downloads, because you have called him with all of these wonderful names, then he will be able to respond. And then you get and say, Lord, I'm here just for you to hear you. You know, I mean, I go to the extent of asking him, are you okay today, Bob? How is your day? Mm. I now I'm having a great one because when now you are, I'm spending time with you. And I thank him for the day. So ask him, whatever that comes to your spirit, so that this relationship can grow. We should not be serious about, uptight. yes, mm. uptight about these things of God. But let's have a nice, I mean, I'm a joyful person. So when I wake up, I'm like, Lord, thank you for today. And, and it starts uh, howling because sometimes I can't sing. So I press and we sing together. And then I'll ask him how he is. And in am top, I call him by all those wonderful names. And I try to find a new name every week of him so that I throw, even if it's Hebrew names, even if whatever language, so that he sees what I'm interested in this relationship. Let's do that and just stay in prayer. Prayer is key. I love you. And I know that a lot of things that we shared today, God is going to still reveal even more. If there are any questions, you can send them and then we'll respond. But I thank God for this time. I thank you, um, Zodra, for creating this platform. And I know a lot of things are going to happen. Can we just pray? Father, in the name of Christ Jesus, we thank you for everything that we have shared today. We thank you for our presence, my God. We thank you that as we were discussing, we know your angels were doing the work on our behalf more and well. And we thank you that you are filling us up as we are discussing, my God, and filling up everyone with the, with the Holy Spirit. And we thank you for revealing your secrets of your heaven. And we know, my God, that this discussion has done a lot of change in our lives in other people's lives. Our families are going to see us differently. Our friends are going to see us differently, my God. The world is going to see us differently. We are going to win souls for your kingdom. We are going to read even more uh, your word. We are going to um, experience a greater revelations from your word, my God. And our lives will never be the same. We thank you, we honor you, we exalt you. We're stealing this discussion with the blood of Jesus in the mighty name of Christ Jesus, amen. 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 Thank you so much for the prayer, Pastor. Um, we ca you can uh, reach us on our Facebook page and also on our um, Instagram page. Uh, that is Econo Thrive Global and also Africa for Jesus uh, Ministries. Also, um, we are available on YouTube as Africa for Jesus Ministries if you are interested to see uh, some of the sermons that they've had and also obviously our Instagram page as Econo Thrive Global where we will be uploading uh, these conversations as we go forward. Thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you taking time and we really, really, really love you and we look forward to having you again next week. From me, Uzodwa, Kamsimang, Nsibande, Umakoche, Thank you so much. Good afternoon. <laughs>